Good evening and welcome to the channel. In tonight's episode, we're going into the garden. Let's go. I have about a week, give or take, before my last frost is here. And so I want to show you what's in the garden. As you can see, I'm standing in front of the cattle panel. I have not taken down the frost blanket or the greenhouse plastic. All I've done is open up the garden. So let me show you what I have growing that came from last fall, last winter, and things. I've just sown probably about a couple of stuff. So let's look. Let's see what I got. I have been moving pots around this pot right here. The only thing that's in there is a cover crop. I'll be doing a chop and drop, fertilizing that pot a little bit more, adding some more soil and planting it up so it's not ready yet. As you can see, these are actually my brown mustards. These are seeds I picked up at the Asian market several years ago. These were in the garden in the fall. I uncovered them. They have a little bit of sun damage, as you can see on, on the corners. This is sunburn but they are growing. The centers are growing nicely. I have shallots inside of this pot that I planted some time ago and they're growing nicely. This is my Malabar spinach pot. I did re-sow seeds. It will come up when it's ready. These pots under this plastic. Here we go. I don't know if you all remember, but these were my pepper pots. These pots were all hot peppers and the cattle panel, if you all remember, was destroyed by the wind. The wind blew the plastic off several times. So these peppers did not survive. Now it looks like I've got something coming up right there. I don't know if that's a weed or if that's a pepper. What I have done is I did drop peppers. Oh, I'm not going too fast. I drop peppers inside of each one of these pots to see if I can get them to just go ahead on and grow. And I try to also sow seeds indoors. So you're seeing this for the first time like I'm seeing this. So that's the first time I'm seeing anything green growing in here. So that's very this exciting. This right here is my beet pot. I sold beets in this pot in the fall. Um, it says albino beet, but I also put in here the red i can't think of the name of it i had some other beets but i put just a whole variety of beets in this pot and this is what i have thus far over in these two pots as you can see still partially covered let's see if i can pick up the plastic these two pots were pots that i grew my three sisters met that last year i had beans i had squash and i had corn the corn did not fare. I do apologize for the sun. The sun is beginning to go down. Let's see if I can move a little bit to get you guys a better view. There you go. Um, the corn did not do well in these containers, so I have a different plan for the corn this coming year. But as you can see, I have some shallots and they're growing nicely. I did try, these are either shallots or bunching onions. Let me see. I tried to put some golden beets in here, but they did not come up. Those seeds either did not get enough water or they were not viable seeds. My thought is they were not viable seeds. I tried to put rutabaga in this pot. They did not come up. I think it was the same thing. Either the seeds were not viable or it didn't get enough water. I think it was the seeds. So I've got um, either shallots or bunching onions and they are coming up nicely. But that's what I have thus far. I will have to do some cleanup because as you see over there, I've got some leaves that have died back. So I will be cleaning these pots up. This container contains a couple of parsnips. Um, it looks like my seeds either, let me look in there. My seeds were not very good because I did sow a lot of seeds and I only see maybe four or five parsnips in there along with a an onion i think that's the walking onion 
fruit and flower area is looking really good. I've got something eating on my rhubarb down there, but I put some rhubarb in the ground. I also have some comfrey down there. It is beginning to pop back up. You can only see, actually you can't see it just yet, but I know it's down there. Uh, this is chop and drop. I do have strawberry in here. Um, the raspberry in here is looking really good. I don't know if you can, you all can tell, but those are raspberry leaves. They are just coming up and they're looking really nicely. There's a raspberry leaf right there. So the raspberries are looking really good. I'm working on a project over here, but I've got some flowers there. I'm running some drip lines. So this is all flowers. This is my grape pot. I also have strawberry in here somewhere. Um, I'm not quite sure where, but oh, here we go. I got a strawberry in there. It doesn't look that great, but hopefully it it perks up i don't know about it it's got i don't know y'all that strawberry don't look so great but this is my grape pot and as you can see behind all the chop and drop the grape is beginning to put on leaves those are grape leaves right there there is some buds right there it's putting on buds i'm going to have to stake it up but it is looking really really well it's looking good this is my raspberry no i'm sorry this is my blackberry pot uh let's see i have a looks like my strawberries are not doing so well y'all they've been out for a little bit the blackberry is waking up it's looking really good i put some flower seeds in that pot back there but i don't see anything germinating and I'm running a drip line back there. This is my new asparagus pot that I put in last year. It's not even a year old, but it has asparagus. It has some chop and drop in there. It, I found a carrot. This is a carrot right here. Didn't realize that was even in there. And I put some burdock root in here. And I believe that might be the burdock root. We'll see. This is my first time coming outside all day, so please excuse the garden needs water. I will be watering. I have to water all of this by hand because I'm working on adding these big pots in the back to the drip line. But they all have flowers and bulbs in them. Um, I'm not going to talk to you guys about what those are, but they all have been potted up. Coming up nicely, and I will be watering before this evening. As you can see, I did finish that pot, but I still have some more connectors. This too. container just has chop and drop. I don't have anything else in it just yet. I will be planting something in it. I'm not quite sure what. And like I said, my garden needs to be watered. This is my first time coming outside today. You all almost didn't get a video. I have been feeling under the weather, but I am out here because I need to water. And I wanted to show you all a real and honest view of my garden. These are my Swiss chard. I'll be watering them heavily today because they are definitely showing signs of heat. Like I said, it's it's been, I think I said, it, it's been hot today, unseasonably warm. It's been 80 degrees today. So I'm gonna give all of this back here uh, some water. These are some marigolds that came up from last year that reseeded. Different flowers back there, as well as um, Jerusalem artichoke. I put some flowers and some Jerusalem artichoke in that pot as well as some chop and dry. Elderberry is looking okay. It's got chop and drop in the pot. This is chop and drop right here. Um, this is my elderberry right in here. It's coming up. Oh, there we go. We've got some elderberry growing right here. I want to let you all know if you're not aware, if you're thinking about growing elderberry and you're thinking about putting it in the ground, it will walk this is the elderberry that just popped up and over here is where the elderberry back there is where they they originally were so all of these little babies they're popping up so elderberry i believe it walks there's little babies in there down there too but the rest of this is chop and drop in this pot back there i bought some onions from a produce market I had two that were 
rooting or sprouting, I put them in the garden. And so they're going to give me seeds. And so that's an onion. And over there is an onion. But I did put some artichoke in both of these. Uh, I put some chop and drop and a globe artichoke and a cauliflower. The cauliflower and the artichoke did not come up, or at least I haven't seen it yet. In that one over there, I have the onion. I have a um, I have another variety of artichoke. I can't think of the name of it right now. And I believe that is a brassica. Well, I know that's a brassica. I think that, I don't want to guess y'all, but I put a different variety of brassica in there that is not a cauliflower. I believe that's a Romanesco. And then I've got chop and drop around it. These containers need to be potted up. They are pretty much empty except for some chop and drop. Excuse my shadow, but this is my asparagus that's about three, maybe even four years old. I have to look at the video. But I've been harvesting off of this asparagus. And let me tell y'all, I've never eaten fresh asparagus before this. And I am over the moon excited about it. It is so delicious. I absolutely love it. So this is my mature asparagus. And I'm thinking it's going to give me more seeds. It gave me seeds last year. That's what I used to create the other pot of asparagus down there. And if it does give me seeds, I'll be happy about it because I've already sown all of my asparagus seeds from last year. Next to the asparagus is, I think it's called, Chizim, I'm not even going to try it, y'all. I'm going to jack it up. But it's an Asian green, and I'm going to have to spray because I've got some little bugs coming out. But um, I sold that not too long ago. It was not August 30th. That, that was the last time I sold this pot up with the Asian green. I sold those a few weeks ago. So I am going to be spraying and um, giving everything good water. I put dinosaur kale in here. Nothing has come up yet. This is the red Russian kale. I promised y'all that I would show y'all a real, real life of what the garden sometimes looks like. Um, like I said, it's, it's been unseasonably warm. It was 80 degrees today. was not expecting it to be so warm. So that's red Russian kale. Um, over in this pot next to the red Russian kale, this was a broccoli rob. I resold some broccoli rob down there. And I have seeds from the broccoli rob I sold last fall so i'm excited about harvesting those seeds i put in this pot um a tomato last year that did not come up so i think that is a weed so i'll be just kind of looking at that for a little while longer to see exactly what it is and if it is a weed i will be pulling it out i have some onion chives and this is i believe a premier kale yeah a premier kale Again, I will be watering everything as soon as I get off of here with you all. Because as you can see, my garden is suffering. But like I said today, uh, was not a good day for me. So um, this pot right here, I resold it. It is a uh, sprouting broccoli. It might even be a sprouting broccoli rod, but I did sow some broccoli there. This is nothing more than a chop and drop. Um, I was going to put some Ethiopian kale in this pot. But I had a, a weed of some kind that I just cut out of it about a week ago, and I need to re-sow it. I'm not sure if I have any more Ethiopian kale seeds or Ethiopian spinach seeds. I have to double check, but this is chop and drop that I'll be using. Of course, and our flowers. I'm not going to go over what that is. You all will see that as they begin to grow. And this flower is my Chicago hardy fig that is waking up. And she is looking absolutely beautiful. My Chicago hardy fig. I put in some um, purple lady bok choy not too long ago. And as you can see, I've got purple ladies coming up. And this is an onion from last year. So I'm going to have to watch that. And I need to move it because you can see it's really thick. So I'm going to have to fix that. And Take the soil around so it can bulb up. This container used to contain a um, LSU purple fig, but it succumbed either to lack of watering 
or um, a change in fertilization. Either way, I apparently have lost it. So I will be potting this up with something else. I'm not going to replace the LSU purple. This is a pepper that I overwintered in the greenhouse. Part of it has died. As you can see right there, that's green. And then I've got some green right there. That's a, That should be the pepper as well. But this was um, a mystery pepper that I gotten from the store that I grow every year. I have no idea what it is. All I know is it's red and it's hot. So that's what's in this container. This is chop and drop. This was my nectarine tree. And I say was because I'm not certain if it's alive. Again, could have been a um, water issue. Could have been... A fertilizer issue because I, I purchased a new fertilizer at the end of last year and I think it was too much for the tree but I don't know that for certain it's not awake I, I don't know if it's going to come back we'll, we'll see I'm I'm letting that sit this is a pepper plant that I pulled out of the greenhouse and it did not do well it was a carnival mixed bell pepper so I will be um, sowing seeds for this. I think I already have some seeds in the garage greenhouse, but we'll see if that, that pepper does okay because I don't know those peppers in the garage. Oh, they are just not doing, they're not performing how I would like. Now this pot, it looks like, it says Ethiopian kale and this is a, this is a brassica right here. And then this is chop and drop. So I'm hoping that it's definitely an Ethiopian kale. I do believe I do have Ethiopian kale seeds, so I'm hoping that that's what that is right there. And of course, an onion. And this is an overwinter pepper that I pulled out of the greenhouse. As you can see, this stalk is wooden, but it is very much so green over there. And then I have a green stalk right here with woody bits. I'm probably going to just cut off the woody bits. This was a uh, pepperoncini pepper. So I'm hoping that this will grow for me and give me more peppers than it did last year because it did not yield as many peppers as this I This container have liked. I potted up several weeks ago, I think it was. It has some chop and drop, but I put some um, pigeon peas in here. So I'm hoping that's what all of this is. I'm hoping this is all pigeon peas that are popping up. I don't believe I put the lady cream peas in here but I might have put lady cream peas as well as pigeon peas because last year lady cream peas grew in this pot, but that's what I, I put in there. So we'll see. We'll see what this that is. was a shishito pepper that did not survive overwintering. So I'm running irrigation to it and I put peppers in there. I just dropped peppers just like I did on the cattle panel. I'm hoping that a pepper will grow from the pepper that I dropped in there that had all the seeds. We shall see. I thought this tree had died and you guys, I have been jumping up and down just overjoyed. This is my methylene plum that I bought last year. It was looking real bad and shady, but as you can see, hopefully you all can see, leaves are starting to form and the bark is kind of green. So I'm excited about this methylene plum. I really hope my nectarine comes back, but here we go. Now, I'm not sure. I think this branch here, I have to double check, but this branch grew out of it, and I don't know if this is below or above the graph, but this branch grew out of it, and I tried to cover up my stem, but we'll see um, what, what comes of this branch. I just left it. I'm gonna, I may have to unwrap it to double check to see if it is above the graph. If, if it's below the graph, I'm going to have to cut that off because that's going to be uh, something completely different than a methylene plum. And I may not want that. But under, under it is um, chop and drop. And if I hadn't said it before, I used clover, I used fenugreek, and I used alfalfa as my chop and drop last in this container, you can see the clover is really, really taken off. I'm not going to cut the clover back. I do want that to go to flower so I can get some more flower seeds from that. But this is fenugreek. I will be cutting that back. Now, this was a 
plum and I can't think of the name of it right now. I know I have a tag. I don't see the tag. I'm not going to waste time looking for the tag, but I believe this one to come just like the nectarine. I'm not going to talk about this it. This was uh, just an empty pot that I threw some lettuce in and some chop and drop. So I've got chop and drop in here and I have some lettuce that I need to harvest. This is my peach tree. I know what this one is. This is a Fort Sam peach and I've got chop and drop up under it. And look at, can you guys see that? I hope you guys can see that. It is coming back. So excited about it. I wasn't quite sure. I, I kind of figured it, it would come back because there was a few leaves down there that were green and some new stems that it grew. But I don't know. I was just kind of thinking, oh man, please, not another tree. Please, not another I tree. I was excited and very disappointed when I uncovered the plastic from my greens pot. I've had this collard green in this pot for a couple of years now. I also have onions all around the pot. I found some little green worms on here. I've picked them off. I've sprayed it, but I need to spray it again. Now, this right here is, I think, the red mustard, not the brown mustard, but I could be wrong. But either way, it's going to seed, and I'm going to let it because I want to collect seeds from this. This was not supposed to be in this pot anyway. I don't know how that little monster got over here, but I'm letting that one go to seed. I will be harvesting my greens and getting them canned up very soon and i also have this green i don't know which one this is but as you can see it's it, i hope you can see it the stem is purple compared to this one it's white and this leaf is thicker than this leaf they're delicious either way but i'm not sure how i have the two different varieties but then again no look it's kind of purple in there that stem is purple, but as it comes out, it's white. Maybe that's just a younger, I think that's just a younger version of this one. Because I know I did clip off some babies and stick them in the soil to try to um, have more than one of these plants. Because I only had one in here, and I've had this for a couple of years, and I, I wanted to propagate this that. This is my broad bean plot, pot. Now, I'm hoping beyond hope that this broad bean will give me beans it does not like heat at all period full stop and it's been really windy so the, the flowers that have been falling into the pot but i'm really hoping that this will give me some seeds because i'm very low on my broad beans i've never even eaten a broad bean and i really would like to taste it this is an experiment for me i also put in here um either some bunching onions or a chive i cannot remember I'm sorry, a shallot, either a bunching onion or a shallot, but I do have that in there. Now, this pot I'm really excited about. This was the pot or is the pot that I have my turnip greens in, and I've allowed it to go to seed because I bought this seed several years ago from Baker Creek, and there were two different varieties in here that actually grew. I put more than two, but only two seeds germinated. I have a white one and I have a uh, pinkish looking one and I wanted more seeds and so as you can see I am getting seeds so I'm excited so I'll be harvesting these leaves hopefully they won't be tough or bitter normally when your plants your brassicas go to seed they become very bitter I may forego trying to eat these I may just harvest these seeds just to clean I'm sorry these leaves to clean it up and put these leaves in the um, liquid compost bin because this is probably too bitter but I'm excited to see that it's going to seed on this side of the cattle, pa cattle panel I don't know why I can't say that cattle panel I have peppers as well I had fish pepper in this one and again same as the other side they all died but I did drop peppers in each and every one of these pots so I'm hoping that I will have and that my friends is a pepper that is a cayenne I know what a pepper a baby pepper looks like and that is a baby can you all see that come on stop being blurry that 
Okay, my camera is not cooperating, but that is a cayenne pepper baby. So I'm excited to see that. Very, very excited to see that. So I'm hoping that I will get more peppers to come up. I've tried to grow them indoors, but I've got to do better about growing stuff indoors. It's just, it's just not what I do. I don't do it well. I already know that my plants need water, but I wanted to show you all. This is a bachelor button. Isn't he beautiful? I am inside the cattle panel and it's not all carnage, but it does, it does look a little sad. Look a little sad, y'all. Look a little sad. Okay, so over here, these are lemongrass that are coming back. I had no doubt that they weren't going to come back. This is also a lemongrass. I have two containers of Texas Star Hibiscus, and they don't appear to be waking up yet. I'm hoping they come back, but I have some bunching onions in here. Same as the other side. I hope I'm not going too fast. I have a pot over there as well. Oh, wait, hold on, y'all. Let's move this plant. I saw something that I had not seen. Look at that right here in the center. That is a Texas Star Hibiscus coming back. They wanted to live. Yes. So excited to see that. These containers also have um, peanuts. This is not a peanut. I think that's a weed, so I'll be pulling that out. But I did not harvest the peanuts, so they should be coming back when they're ready. Excuse all the crunching under my feet. Now, this was the Broad London Leeks. I don't know if you all can see that, but I've got some little baby leeks coming up in here. This one did not do as well, but I've got little baby leeks. Hope you guys can see that. Not very many, but a few. I used the leek that grew and went to seed, and I spread them in this container, but I do have a couple. Not many, but I do have a couple. So those are my broad London leeks. Over here is the American flag leek, varying size leeks. As you can see, this one did a whole lot better. There's a lot more in this pot. I also put tomatoes. I had tomatoes growing in this pot as well as the other leek pot. And that's the only one that's still left. The, other, the others have either broken down or something has come in here and eaten them. But I'm hoping to get tomatoes to come up in here as well. Inside when as well, I had tomatoes over here and I put tomatoes in there. And I don't see any, so I'm hoping that nothing came in here and ate them. I hope they just deteriorated and broke down and I'll get I know you all see this nasty bucket water right here. I have created two more liquid fertilizer buckets and they are absolutely gross. Um, they, it smells like a pig farm in here. If you've ever been to a pig farm, you know how that smells and it's nasty. So I'm going to be making sure that I'm feeding more. I've made about four more of these liquid fertilizer containers that way I am properly feeding my garden, which was something that I was not doing last year, but this year I'm working towards properly feeding. And this is my other garden seat. I have one in the garage, but this is my very first one. So I brought this one outside. Now over in these containers, this is where I had my sweet potatoes. I didn't get very many sweet potatoes out of here last year. So I left what I did have in here over the winter and look y'all, that's a sweet potato coming back and that's a sweet potato coming back. And I'm so excited, oh, and here's another one. So I do have sweet potatoes coming back. I'm not gonna have a whole pot full that are coming back from last year. I, I do have some in the house that I'm trying to um, get slips on, but these came back from last year. And I'm so excited. These are either the Marasakis or the Stokes. Those are the only two sweet potatoes I like to grow. And of course, I put three different varieties of peas. And I know you're not supposed to put peas and onions together, but I did. So they're probably going to be stunted, but I've got little onion babies. My thought process was is that these peas would, would grow up and die back well before the onions made any bit of a dent. So 
there you have it. But you're not supposed to put onions and peas together. But here are all of my pea pots. And there's three different varieties of peas. And also baby onions that I grew from seed. So as you can see, these are taking off. They're holding on to one another. I was trying to get them to grow onto the cattle panel. That would be optimal. But I need to take down all of the winter covering. And I'm not ready to do that yet because you just never know if the weather is going to turn cold. There are supposed to be another couple of days where the, the temperature drops down into the 40s. But like I mentioned before, it's 80 degrees and it's actually really warm in here. So I'm not going to be in here for too much longer because I feel really hot. But these are my peas and I, I put in three different types of peas, a purple magnolia, and I can't think of the other two, <laughs> the, other, the other three. Now over on this side, I hope I'm not going too fast. I had llama beans in here. I let them die back because I um, wanted the seed for the lima beans. The seed that I put in there were very, very old and I was hoping to get um, some fresh new seed. It did grow, but the winter hit it. I chopped it back. I have to see if I have any seed pods. I've got some seed pods down there. They look a little rough. I don't want to touch them with my hand, but I will go in there and pick those seed pods out. I'm going to refresh this container and I will be planting up my potatoes in this pot. But those were lima beans. And I have some blue Adirondack potatoes I need to get outside. They should have been outside, but shoulda, woulda, coulda. They'll get out here real soon. And then these three pots right here, I had a San Marzano tomato in that one. I had a subarctic tomato in this one. I took all the San Marzanos out of that, so I'm hoping I do not have a San Marzano growing in that because I want to pot something else up in that. I did drop some subarctic tomato in here, so I'm hoping I get a subarctic that grows. And this was a, um, it says Swiss chard, but I had a eggplant in here that didn't do much of anything. So I've got a little baby eggplant in the, in the indoor greenhouse that I want to put in here. So that is what I have. I'm going to wrap this up in the greenhouse. So here we are, the greenhouse. Let's look and see what I have in here. Excuse the greenhouse, but I've been taking bit by bit little things out of my garage greenhouse and bringing them out here. There are some things out here that were already out here that overwintered. And so that's what you'll see. This is a canna that my aunt gave me. As you can see, it's very much alive. It has uh, two babies. I think maybe the, the initial plant might have succumbed, but it's got a baby here and a baby here. As long as it's alive, I'm okay with that. Now, these were seeds that I, a plant that I grew from seed. These are butterfly bushes that I'm gonna put in my um, memorial garden. This is a orange variety. This is a white variety. And this is white sage. And it looks like I only have two white sage that came up. This is an elephant ear with some calendula. It is coming up. I don't know if you can see that. These are two different varieties of um, avocado. I don't know if you all can see that. Let's move this over. This is two different varieties of avocado that actually overwintered in the cattle panel before I moved them in here. And I don't know if you all can see, I'm trying to step over and not step on anything. But this one is beginning to grow. Can you see those little, right there, those little green parts? Though that's coming back. And these are items I had in the greenhouse, in, door, in the garage. These two are um, bitter melon. These are moringa babies. And that is a loofah and these are loofahs i have the fan blowing on them so it looks like they are not happy they are turning a little light in color so they are not happy i'm going to have to move them away from the door they i think they're getting a little bit too much of the sunlight today because they did not look like this uh, yesterday when i came in here 
but as you can see the the uh, moringa are reaching towards the door so they're getting a lot of light this is a clematis called miss batesman i want to say i picked this up from uh, the big box store uh, lowe's i wasn't expecting much from it but it has decided that it wants to grow i'm going to place this one in the front garden this is a white clematis i was trying to leave it in here for a year to allow the roots to get the root ball to get really big but look how much growth it's put on it, it had a tiny little bitty root ball like this big and look at it it's already flowered um twice you all have already seen all of my aloe vera but this is some of the opposite aloe vera. side this is all the other aloe vera over here i have some um, onions i think these are chives but don't hold me to that i have to look at my little tag inside this <clears throat> excuse me this is supposed to be a pomegranate and a soursop but i think the soursop died because i overwintered this in the cattle panel and i had a little green over here and it's not over there anymore but now i've got a little bitty green right there so i'm thinking that that's the pomegranate we'll see what happens floor here this is a canna that i got from walmart and these two are my original mother aloe veras they did not do well and i'll put a clip in to show you all what happened to the tp greenhouse uh, but the tp greenhouse was thrown down in the wind and it really messed up my mother aloe veras but this one is surviving because it is now beginning to give me more babies and it had no babies on it but as you can see it had a lot of death on it and it's growing in the inside this one is not faring so well so i may i may have lost that one i hope i don't but we'll see i'm gonna water everything in and here. it looks like this has gotten too much water Ugh. those are onions can you guys see that i'm gonna have to get those out of there i'm hoping that they're still good i don't know Ooh. oh my goodness but those are onions i wanted to give you guys a true and honest look at my garden and this is what it looks like my last frost date is quickly approaching i've got another week and then we're in full swing i have been sewing directly i have some a few more things in the garage greenhouse as you can see by what i showed you i've been bringing some things out and putting them in the outdoor greenhouse and so that's all i've got for you all today i really have got to water the sun is going down and i don't want to have the sun go down on me before i finish watering everything so i hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you come back for the next video if, if you like this content do me a favor give me that thumbs up subscribe share the video and i hope to see you either in my garden my kitchen, my indoor grow space, or my outdoor greenhouse, because that's where I am, real soon. Bye for now.